Greetings, everyone. Uh, last time at our last discussion, I repurposed the phrase eyes on the prize and uh, oriented it towards the gold mine within the human being. We're going to continue with that theme a little bit and with the whole idea of restorative justice. What I want to do now is talk about its institutionalization. So I've been talking about individual examples here and there. And uh, at the time that I wrote Search for a Nonviolent Future, uh, the most prominent example of an institution that comes outside the mainstream, it's sort of a grassroots institution, but is an institution, was AVP, the Alternative to Violence Project. And the remarkable thing about it was that it was prisoner initiated. It wasn't people outside the walls who thought we ought to go in and help these guys. But the prisoners in Greenhaven State Prison in upstate New York actually called upon a Quaker group outside to come in and give them some workshops, to give them some skills. So since then, nonviolent communication and many other uh, organizations have been working on uh, giving people verbal skills so that they don't have to uh, devolve into physical abusive uh, conflict. And AVP has spread to almost every country in the globe and other organizations have taken up the same challenge. A particularly interesting case, and there are now two documentary films on this. One is called Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. Another is called the Dharma Brothers. Uh, a very interesting case is teaching meditation in prisons. Because I think if education, as I was saying before, the mere assumption that a person is educable, that they can learn something, restores a, a certain amount of their dignity. Meditation does the same thing, perhaps even a little more. If you say to a person that you have a capacity within yourself, which you haven't yet discovered, that you are not uh, a helpless, frozen individual, uh, the result of your genes or hormones or whatever, I think that immediately has a restorative effect, especially if you're in a culture that appreciates that sort of thing. And that first film that I mentioned, Doing Time, Doing Vipassana, is about Vipassana meditation in a very crowded prison in North India. And if you see that film, you'll see the tremendous uh, impact that it has on the men to be given a little bit of instruction in meditation. Well, okay, on um, page 147, uh, I quote from Lila Rucker, who is another uh, restorative justice advocate and scholar who makes a very interesting comment, which I think we can use in this area and many others. She says, and I quote, the sense of worth, she's at the University of South Dakota, professor there, or was when I wrote Search for a Nonviolent Future, this sense of worth is tied to our sense of connectedness to other human beings. Hence the brilliance of Bo Lozoff's little formula. Instead of saying, get out of here, saying, get back in here. I think that's something pretty profound to be aware of in our human nature, that I can never build my dignity by separating myself from other people. This is where dictators go wrong. And then, you know, I remember a former president of the United States, uh, no name is police, a four letter name, uh, talking to a bunch of very, very wealthy donors and saying, uh, the outs outside everybody considers you the elite, but I consider you my base. In other words, I am the tippy top of the pyramid. And he did not realize that he was actually downgrading himself in his own mind when he was doing that. But more to the point, uh, putting people in isolation and there's an appalling amount of uh, uh, this going, going on now in prisons, of putting people in solitary confinement. It's exactly the opposite of what we need to do to have a restorative system. I want to say one more thing.